Zapier Paths is a feature that is available to Zapier users on the professional plan or higher. And it's a really powerful feature that allows you to uh, perform different actions and go down different routes in your Zapier automation uh, based on certain criteria in your Zap. So it's pretty much like a filter, but with the option of uh, continuing and having different continuations uh, based on whatever happens in your Zap. Um, so it's a really, really powerful feature and I'm going to show you how you can use it in this video. This video is part of my Zapier 101 course, which is available on Udemy, Skillshare and my own Teachable platform. And in the course, you will learn everything that you need to know about Zapier starting from complete scratch. So building out your first automations um, to more complex workflows and built in apps uh, to really advanced workflows and automations that will save you hours in your business every week, every month, and uh, will just make your life easier and your business more optimized. The course was specifically designed for beginners, so if you're just starting out with Zapier, uh, then this is the right course for you. It's also only around 10 to $15, depending on where you buy it. Um, and if you sign up through my link for Skillshare in the description down below, uh, you will even be able to access it for free for the first 14 days. So if that sounds interesting to you, then you can check it out through the links in the description down below and I hope I'll see you in the course. Understanding how Zapier paths work is not even that hard because it's uh, again, as I said, pretty similar to using filters in Zapier. So in this demo uh, Zap that I have right here, I am triggering a Zap whenever I post a new video on YouTube. Uh, and this is uh, in a similar way, something that I actually do use in uh, for Yannick's workspace on a daily basis. So uh, whenever I post a new video um, on my YouTube channel, then I want to upload that video to my WordPress website as a post. So the first thing I'm doing is just uploading the media, so the thumbnail to uh, the WordPress website. But then also I want to like actually create the post. And when creating the post, I actually want to assign the right category based on whatever I'm talking about uh, inside of the video. Um, so for example, I'm talking about uh, Notion in some videos, I'm talking about Figma, about Zapier, about Todoist, about Elementor, about all these different tools. And so I have these different categories on my website that I want the video to appear in. Now, how can you do this? Uh, well, it's not really possible to do unless you have Zapier paths. And uh, in this case, you see I have these A, B, C, these three options, which means that I have three different paths set up here, three different things that can happen uh, when the zap is triggered and when it comes to this step. So if I click on one of these options, the first one being like the category elemental one, um, then I see the uh, rules here. And um, this is just the name, but when I go to rules, setup and testing, we see an interface that looks pretty f familiar if we, you've used the uh, Zapier filters before. So this just says that we won't only want to continue if the title of the YouTube video, which is again data that we got from the video um, trigger, uh, if the title contains the word Elementor. Uh, because I usually write the uh, tool that I'm talking about in the video in the uh, YouTube uh, title, so uh, it should be there if I'm talking about Elementor. Uh, and this can be used to uh, continue the zap uh, and to go down this path. So whenever this is actually true, uh, then I want to go on to the next step, which is to create a post in WordPress. And here we actually see that I'm, uh, well, I'm assigning, uh, where is it, down, down here, I'm assigning the category of Elementor. Uh, and that only happens, again, if the category of Elementor is matching, uh, if Elementor is mentioned in the title of my YouTube video, uh, and if it doesn't, then we um, it just doesn't work. Now, if that isn't the case, uh, it's unlike in the filter example, because if you just use filter, then well, if it doesn't match, then the app is just over and um, that's it. But in the case of paths, uh, we could have multiple options. So either if, the uh, the title contains Elementor, uh, we'll then assign Elementor. But if it instead contains Notion, uh, we'll then just assign Notion as a category. Uh, and also uh, this last step, uh, if it uh, if it contains Figma, then con uh, then like add Figma as the category. If it contains Zapier, add Zapier, and so on. That's a really powerful logic step that you can implement, where you can go down multiple paths in your Zap. 
uh, depending on whatever is happening. So uh, in my case, I'm only, uh, or like only adding one more step, but you could also have like lots and lots of additional steps in here. And you could also even have more paths inside of these paths. So you could get much more granular with the uh, like distribution and the different options that you have. And you can like really uh, do extremely specific things based on really specific like categories and conditions that you want to choose. Now something important that I have to mention is that on each of these different levels uh, you can only add three different paths. And now you might be wondering, well how can I like um, categorize my YouTube videos into more than three different categories? Um, well what you can do is you can have these paths within these paths. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a bit complicated but it, this is how you can go around this issue. So uh, in the case of my path C right here, if you click on that, you'll see that this is like the path for these three different tools. And um, the rule and testing here is that if it either contains one of these three um, words in the, in the title, it can be any of these, uh, then this continues. And then this next step is just another path which then categorizes them down into the individual videos. So no matter if I have a video about Figma, Zapier or Todoist, uh, this would always be true in these cases. But then the next step would happen and then it will be like uh, categorized down into the individual tools and uh, then inside of these uh, I'm just assigning the correct, uh, you know, just the, the, the correct uh, categories based on whatever tool that is. Um, so this is a nice workaround for only having the option to add three different paths on each of these levels. So this is a really, really powerful feature that has lots and lots of options and that really is something that you can use in, in lots and lots of zaps, in lots and lots of different situations. Uh, one example as like a, uh, you know, use case inspiration would be to um, use this in your onboarding process. So uh, if you have a client-based business uh, or even like a software business, um, you might want to create a onboarding process that is different for different kinds of users. Um, so you could have the, the paths determine uh, like based on certain criteria, maybe on company size, on contract size, um, on yeah, how many people you're trying to onboard with this company. The criteria is up to you, but um, just as an example, based on these, on these different conditions, uh, you could create different onboarding processes. For example, if you have a, a huge new client, maybe for this client you want uh, like to assign a, a individual person that just um, it's just worrying about them and it's like their personal assistant when it comes to onboarding. Um, and for like smaller clients, you might not want to do something like this. You know, this is a good way where you could use this to um, like segment the, the zap down into different parts and to go down different routes based on um, what is happening and based on criteria that you set. All right, that's it already for Zap Your Paths. I hope uh, this video is helpful to you. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to let me know. Again, the Q&A section is there for you, so I'm happy to answer any of your questions if they're related to Zapier and uh, the contents of this course, uh, obviously. But um, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. That's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Again, this video is part of my Zapier 101 course, which is available on Udemy, Skillshare and my own Teachable platform. And in the course, we go through everything that you need to know, starting from complete scratch uh, all the way to more advanced workflows. And this will actually help you save countless hours in your business uh, on tedious work and tedious tasks that can be easily automated through Zapier. Uh, the course was specifically designed for beginners, as I said, and it's only around 10 to $15. Um, so if you thought about starting to learn more about Zapier, uh, then this is the right tool for you, the right course for you, um, and I hope I'll see you there. The links to all these courses are in the description down below, and if you sign up for my Skillshare course, uh, then you will even be able to access it for 14 days for free um, through my link in the description. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.